So my name is Julia. I work for a company that does data mining. And when I'm lucky, I get to use pan pandas and IPython. When I'm unlucky, I get to use Java. Um, so pandas is a library for data analysis. It was written by a guy called Wes McKinney, originally for fi financial data analysis, so a lot of time series analysis. And it provides you with some really good data structures and a ton of useful helper functions for data cleanup, for transforming your data, for doing statistics on your data. Um, and it's especially useful when you combine it with IPython Notebook, which is a web-based notebook. Um, I made this presentation in IPython Notebook and make slides now. <laughs> um, and it's pretty much amazing. If you want to know what it looks like, it looks like this. So I'm going to walk through an example of using pandas to, um, to analyze some data about how many people are biking on the bike paths in Montreal. Um, so right now, not too many. Um, but in the summer, there, there'll be more. So the first thing to do is import the data from a CSV. So we can use this function called read CSV. Um, I got this data from the Montreal Open Data website, uh, Donneau Welt. So we tell it the encoding, the separator, and we get, this, we get a, an object called a data frame which if you know R is like an R data frame. If you don't, you can think of it as like a database. So there are rows, there are columns. Um, there's one row for each, for, for each day of the year. And there's one column for each bike path. So there's seven bike paths. I don't really know what Maisonov one and Maisonov two means, but <laughs> they seem to be popular. Um, and it's indexed by date. Um, and I've told it to parse the dates from the file and to parse them correctly by putting the day first instead of the month, because it's an, an American library. <laughs> um, OK, so now we have this, this data frame, which we've called bike data. And we want to plot it. So we do bike data.plot. And we get this beautiful graph, which is a bit noisy, um, but otherwise very pretty. So I want to know a little bit more about this data set. So I can do describe, and it tells me that there's at most 8,000 people, um, and as few as 47, but there's at least 47 every day of the year, even in the middle of February. Um, I can also take a slice of this data frame by column and look at just two columns. So we can see that these two columns are really highly correlated, right? Like every time one goes up, the other one goes up. And I wanted to figure out why this is. So I decided to look at some weather data. So I wrote a little function called get weather data, which goes to weatheroffice.gc.ca and does a bunch of stuff. Um, so I'm not going to go into detail what this does, but it says, like, read the CSV, skip the first 16 rows where, for some reason, there's some metadata. This is the index column. Parse my dates for me. Drop the columns I don't need. Get rid of some special characters, drop some more columns, um, and then concatenate them all together. So this was pretty easy to write. And if we look at our new data frame, we see that we have the temperature, the weather, and all kinds of fun stuff to play with. Cool. The only problem is that our bike data was every day. And this weather data, we have every hour, which is great but it's not what we need. So because Pandas was written for dealing with time series data, it's really good at this. So what we can do is call resample on the temperature column and say how equals mean. So we take the average temperature every day and make this, I seem to have lost the right side of my screen. But I promise you, right here is a mean temperature column, <laughs> which contains the mean temperature <laughs> every day. Um, and if we draw the graph of this, what we get is, you remember last year in March when it got really warm? Do people remember that, when it was like 20 degrees? Um, people also went biking then. <laughs> um, and over here as well, there is this temperature spike in April, which seems to correspond to this. But, and then over here, like, there's this big spike downwards, and this has nothing to do with the, with, with the temperature. Maybe. But like, 
Not so much. Rain. rain. <laughs> Let's talk about rain. <laughs> um, so I wrote this super long one-liner, <laughs> which I'm going to walk through with you. So I'm going to make a, a rain column in my bike data. So you remember how in weather we had a column which was like fog or rain or freezing rain or snow? So we take that and then we look at str for some string functions, check to see if it contains rain, um, and then convert that to a one or a zero, which I think technically we don't have to do, but I wanted to demonstrate the dot map <laughs> method because you can put anything in it and it's really powerful. <laughs> um, and then again, resample that every day. So what that gives us is the percentage of the day that it was raining. So it's 0 0.5 if it was raining for half the day, one if it was raining for the whole day. And if we plot that, we get another nice graph, which says, hey, if we look at the spike downwards, surprise, it was raining. And then over, and then there, there's some similar things. So this, this still isn't perfect, but do you believe me that, that this is telling us something? <laughs> OK. Um, and that's pretty much it for me. Um, but I hope this has convinced you that it's really easy to use. <laughs> um, you can download this presentation at that URL. Um, and there's a really good book by Wes McKinney who wrote Pandas, um, which has a ton of examples kind of like this, except there's more and they're better. Um, there's a really, really great documentation. There's a mailing group where you can mail all your problems about pandas. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>